Okay, in this video, we're going to be learning how to balance chemical equations. This is a skill that you would have been introduced to in year 10, and we have revisited it earlier in the year 11 course, but it's a really important one to get right. So we'll be spending a fair bit of time making sure that we know how to balance chemical equations and getting lots of practice. Okay, first of all, we need to revise what the numbers actually mean in a chemical equation. The first type of numbers that you get in a chemical equation are the numbers that are actually part of the formula. So they're the small numbers that are part of the chemical formula. So if we have a formula like glucose, for example, C6H12O6, what that tells us is that we have 6 lots of carbon, 12 lots of hydrogen, and 6 lots of oxygen. Similarly, if we've got a formula such as magnesium chloride, that tells us that there's one lot of magnesium and two lots of chlorine. Okay, when we have brackets in a chemical formula, that tells us that everything that is inside the brackets is multiplied by the number that is outside the brackets. So aluminium nitrate, for example, that tells us we've got one lot of aluminium and then we've got three lots of nitrogen and nine lots of oxygen. So we've got three times three, so that's nine lots of oxygen. Okay, and finally, we can also have large numbers in front of formulae. They're called coefficients. And those coefficients, they multiply the entire formula that comes straight after them. So if we've got 2H2O, for example, that tells us that we've got two lots of H2O. So that adds up to four lots of hydrogen all up and two lots of oxygen. On page 12 of your OneNote, you've got the same questions that I've got on the screen. I'd like you to have a go at doing those questions so you can see I've done the first example for you. Pause the video and after you've had a go at doing these questions, turn the video back on and check that you've got the right answers. Okay, so these are the answers. Check you've got them right. If you've got a lot of these wrong, you might want to re-watch the first part of the video before going on to the second part. Okay, so what does it actually mean to balance a chemical equation? What it means is that we've got the same number and type of atoms on both sides of the equation. And there's a really important rule that we've got to follow, and that's we're not allowed to change any of the small numbers that are part of the chemical formulae. The only numbers that we can change are the large numbers or the coefficients that are in front of the chemical formulae. Okay, I'm going to now take you to an interactivity that will explain a little bit more about what it means to balance a chemical equation. So we've got an equation that's written on the screen. That's the equation for the manufacture of ammonia. And then these scales over here show us whether the um, atoms are balanced, whether the equation is balanced. So I'm going to start by putting one lot of each reagent and one lot of the products. And you can see that at the moment the equation is not balanced. We've got two lots of nitrogen on the left, but only one on the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another lot of ammonia. And now the nitrogens are balanced, but the hydrogens are not balanced. I've got too many on the right. So I'm going to add another nitrogen, still another hydrogen, sorry, still not balanced, a third one. Okay, and we can see that the equation is now balanced. We've got the same number of both types of atoms on both sides of the equation. Okay, this is another equation. This time we're separating water. So I'm going to start with one molecule of water on the left, one molecule of hydrogen on the right, and one molecule of oxygen. Okay, so we've got water that's being broken down into hydrogen and oxygen. So at the moment, you can see we've got two oxygen atoms on the right, only one on the left. So I'm going to increase the number of oxygen atoms. Oxygen's now balanced but we've got too much hydrogen on the left. So I'm going to add some hydrogen on the right, and now the equation's balanced. Okay. Last example is the combustion of methane. Now, when, we, when methane undergoes combustion, methane reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. I'm going to try and first of all balance out the hydrogens by adding another lot of water. Okay, hydrogen's now balanced. Carbon's balanced, but oxygen is still not balanced. Okay, so I'm going to add some more oxygen on the left, and now the equation's balanced. We've got the same number and the same type of atoms on both sides of the equation. Okay, you've got a link to this interactivity in your OneNote. It's one of the eChalk activities. 
So it, it will allow you to get some practice at balancing equations and you can see straight away if you're getting it right. So that's the first example. To balance this equation, I need one lot of this. Now if you put one, it's going to leave it blank. One lot of this and two lots of this. And you can see the equations now balanced. So if you work through all of the examples there, that's going to allow you to get some practice and know straight away if you're getting them right. On page 12, you've got a whole lot of questions where you've actually got to balance some chemical equations. Okay, so I've got a few examples here on the screen and uh, I'm going to work through a few examples with you but then I'd like you to get some more practice at uh, balancing equations on your own and you'll notice that I've sent you a copy of the answers. So the idea is that you have a go and then you check your answers. If you're getting them right, great, it means you've, you've mastered this skill. If you're getting a lot of these questions wrong, re-watch the video post questions on the discussion forum and make sure that you get some help with this skill before we move on to some, um, some more difficult skills. First example that we've got here we can see on the left hand side we've got one lot of magnesium, on the right hand side one lot of magnesium so that's balanced. On the left hand side we've only got one lot of H and on the right we've got two lots of H. So I'm going to put a big 2 in front of HCl and now you can see that the equation is balanced. Okay, example two, on the left hand side I've only got one lot of aluminium, here I've got two, so I'm going to put a two here. Um, then the oxygens, I've got two here and I've got three here. So what I can do is I can put a three here, so that now becomes six. I'm going to put a two here, the oxygens are now balanced, but now the aluminium is not balanced anymore. So I'm going to change that two to a four. Okay, so if I change that 2 to a 4, now the equation's balanced. Okay, number 3. On the left hand side we've got one lot of iron, right hand side we've got 2, so I'm going to put a 2 here. Um, next we'll do the hydrogens. On this side I've got 2, and on this side I've got 2, so it looks correct at the moment. Let's keep going. Um, sulfur 1 on this side, on this side I've got 3, so I'm going to put a 3 here. And note that hydrogen is not balanced anymore, so I'll have to fix that later. Okay, now the oxygens, I've got 12 on this side and 12 on this side, so that's okay now. And then the hydrogens now need to be fixed, so I've got 6 on this side, I'm going to put a 3 here, and that's now balanced. Okay, one tip that you're going to find that's going to make it easier for you to balance chemical equations is that often it's going to be easier to balance a chemical equation if you leave the oxygens till the end and the hydrogen till second last. It's not always the case, but for many equations, particularly combustion equations, that tip will save you some time. So we'll have a look at number six, for example. That's an example of a combustion equation. So to balance that one, I'm going to do the carbons first, so the carbons are balanced. Then I'm going to do the hydrogens next. So I've got four hydrogens here, only two here, so I'm going to put a two in front. And then I'll do oxygen last. On this side I've got 2 plus 2 is 4, so I'm going to put a 2 here. Okay, now what you really need now is some practice. So finish page 12 of your OneNote. There are some more examples on the following page as well. And um, after you finish all of those questions, check your answers to see if you're getting them right.